Now we get to construct a cash flow statement using the indirect method. So before we begin, I thought I would create some quick guidelines and rules to help you along the way. So first off, I've created this skeleton of a balance sheet, which shows the different parts of the balance sheet, the current assets, long-term assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities, or long-term liabilities, and equity. And the reason why I've separated them into three sections is because, of course, there are three sections on the cash flow statement. The operating activity section, the investing activity section, and the finance and activities section. And the way this works is if we're adjusting for an account like accounts receivable, we know that accounts receivable is a current asset. And because it's a current asset, we're going to be adjusting for it in the operating activities section. And if we're adjusting for an account like bonds payable, we know that it's a non-current liability, and therefore it's going to be worked into the finance and activities section. If we're adjusting for a long-term asset like land, we know that it's gonna go in the investing activities section. So this is a quick way to kind of dis dissect all the, the accounts on a balance sheet and decide where they go on the cash flow statement. The second part is that everything on the cash flow sti st statement, kind of sounded English there, statement, um, is going to be uh, a source or a use. And we're going to, a quick rule of thumb is that if current assets, this is current assets and current liabilities, if current assets are increasing, if the balance is increasing, it's going to be a use. A use. And if it's going down, it's going to be a source. For current liabilities, if the balance is going up, it's actually going to be the opposite, a source. And if it goes down, it's going to be a use. So this is a quick rule of thumb, and it might not make sense as to why it's a source or a use, but I'll explain the theory behind that in just one second. So let's actually close this and get to our cash flow statement, which we were looking at last time. And we start off with the net income figure, or the net loss, I should say, in this situation. And we're going to be adding back or adjusting for the current assets and current liabilities as I showed in the previous section. That's part of the operating activity section. You can also call this working capital. Working capital. And we're also going to adjust for non-cash expenses like depreciation. And adding back non-cash expenses should be the, the simplest part of the operating activities section. I'll, I'll give you a quick example as to why it is using the simplest parts. If we have revenues and we have let's say just one type of expense, just depreciation expense, and then we have net income. Well with the cash flow statement we're trying to convert this net income on an accrual basis to a cash basis. And this depreciation expense, if it, if our expense goes up, it's going to lower our net income, of course, because depreciation expense is going to subtract from net income. And this is a non-cash expense. So if we're trying to come up with our net income on a cash basis, it would be wrong to subtract non-cash expenses. So in order to fix this, we need to reverse this entry by adding it back it's gonna push our net income back to a normal cash basis figure or a normal net income figure on the cash basis and then we'll be good to go. So this is a very simple example if there's only one type of ex or one type of non-cash expense and if there are no other current assets or current liabilities to adjust for. But of course there are going to be other items and I'll show you how to adjust for all of them. So let's move on to the, the balance sheet that I have. So this balance sheet, we're going to use this to actually create a cash flow statement. And the first thing we're going to look at is the current assets section. So we're going to go with accounts receivable and conduct this part first. So we're going to look at the difference between 2013 and 2014 because that is what matters. So we know that it increased by 41 thousand dollars. So let's go ahead and start our cash flow statement. Let me get rid of this, this layer. 
and then to s well I, I just wanted to show quickly the income statement because we're gonna start off with our income or our net income figure which is 150,000 so we're going to write net income and then we're going to put 150,000 there and then we know that our accounts receivable went up by $41,000. So the first thing is we need to determine whether it is a source or a use of cash. And we know with our rule of thumb that if a current asset increases in its balance, it's going to be a use. But why is it going to be a use? Well, I'm going to get to that in one second once I just quickly write down adjustment and then accounts receivable and write down negative 41,000 to show this is a use. So the best way to probably show this is if accounts receivable goes, goes down. So what is one example in which case uh, a receivable would go down? Well, one case is if we have a collection. So if we have a collection, the entry will be cash being debited and accounts receivable being credited, 41,000 each. This way it clearly shows that the cash is increasing on our books and this is going to be a source, which goes hand in hand with our rule. Whenever current assets decrease in balance, it's going to be a source. So in this example, it would be a source of cash, but looking at our balance sheet, our balance sheet actually increased in in the balance of 41,000 in accounts receivable, so it's actually going to be a use. And the reason why it's going to be a use is if accounts receivable goes up, normally it will be a sale. So we'll have accounts receivable being debited and sales revenue being credited for $41,000. So right now our net income has already factored in this $41,000 of sales revenue. So this amount, this net income figure, is the net income figure that was created on the accrual, accrual basis. But the thing is we want the net income figure to be slowly converted to a net income figure on the cash basis because that's what we're trying to get at for the operating activity section. So if sales revenue increased, we know that net income has increased because of that. So our net income on the cash basis is currently overstated. So we actually need to reverse this accrual or accrued revenue. And that way it's going to bring our net income back down to its proper normal cash basis balance. So we're going to actually subtract the $41,000 which we have done right here and because of that it's going to be a use of cash and that will be the first part of our cash flow statement so we've just subtracted that amount and you might be asking well what happens if this wasn't the entry what if for instance well okay what if it wasn't a collection what if it was maybe a bad debt expense well, the thing is, if it was a bad debts expense and our receivables went down by 41,000 because of that, then we would have a bad debt expense account on our income statement. But the thing is, we don't. So if I actually were to close this and then op open up our income statement, we don't have a bad debt expense account. So we know that that is not a possible journal entry that we would have performed in the past. So it's most likely that it would be a collection. So when I come up with these, these journal entries, it's not saying that's the definite uh, scenario that went down, but this is essentially the idea of what's, or a, of why it might be a source or a use. So if it's some other type of entry, normally another account will be created either on the income statement or the balance sheets and because of that we'll then have to adjust for that one. So that's enough for now and in the next tutorial we'll be talking about inventory and adjusting for that. See you then.
If you have any questions regarding counting or any of the material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.